Okay, so welcome to College Algebra. So there was a question about online homework. So what was your question? Okay, the problem was um, square root mm -hmm. of 144 p squared q to the x. 144 p squared q to the 6. q to 6. Okay, and this was, this is 20, what's today? 29. Okay, and then the instruction was something like, simplify this. Yes. Okay. I was having trouble, like, with how to factor the, like, D and Q. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, we're going to get to this. So I'm going to put this on hold. Because we have just a few things to say before we can say everything there is to say about this. Okay, so <clears throat> uh, last time we had just begun talking about radicals. Is it hot in here? Man, I am hot. <laughs> okay, <clears throat> just making sure I was not unwell. Okay, so uh, we had just talked about radicals, begun talking about them, and there were... Um, two different, essentially two different varieties of radical. There was the even kind and the odd kind. Okay, so then <clears throat> in particular, before the first thing I want to do so that we can have a more efficient conversation, I'm going to make a remark about a little bit of jargon that we need. So by the way, what does the word jargon mean? Like Specialized vocabulary. Okay, so then we need just a little bit of specialized vocabulary here. So the word parody, not parody, like making fun of something, but parity. Parity is uh, <coughs> referring, so refers to even or odd. So to use it in a sentence, I could ask, for example, what is the parity of 68? So what's the parity of 68? Even. So it's and I could ask, say, what is the parity of 103? Odd. In the same way that, that I could ask something like, well, what is the, what's the sign of 10? Positive. What's the sign of negative 12? Negative. Okay, so sign and parity are, have analogous structure. Okay. So uh, <coughs> let's compute some some radicals okay, of, of something. So for example, how about what is the square root of uh, 121? By the way, what radical is this? Okay, so wh which one? N equals 2. It's N is 2, right? So this is second radical, radical 2. So what's the parity of this radical? The parity of the radical is even. Okay. Okay, so what is the square root of 121? 11. 11. Okay. Is it plus or minus 11? No, it's not. Okay, it's just 11. Okay. How about what is the cube root of uh, 64? The answer is 4. Okay, so then <clears throat> this is something that it's in your interest to just memorize. You should know the cubes of all integers 1 to 5, say. So you should know 1 cube, 2 cube, 3 cube, 4 cube, and 5 cubed. Yes? No. Because the thing, things that come out of the square root must be non-negative. Now, there's a separate question which is different, which is to say, 
So let me ask a different question. Is 11 squared 121? Yes. Is negative 11 squared also 121? Mm -hmm. Yes, that is a fact. But the square root of 121 is 11 and 11 only. Okay, <clears throat> good. Other questions? So to get your calculator to do this, if you have, a, if you have this kind of calculator, this kind, uh, then you would you would type uh, the following. You'd type 64, and then caret, and then open parentheses one divide three, and you could get your your calculator to do this. If you have a different variety of calculator, I'll be glad to show you how to make it work after lecture. Okay, <coughs> good. Uh, so we've got these these radicals. So a remark a remark that we uh, more or less made last time, but I'm going to make it uh, again, and that is that let uh, x be in the reals and let n be in the naturals. Then there's two cases, okay, and they correspond to the parity of n. So in the first case, when n is odd, when n is odd, nth root of x is always defined. always defined and two when n is even when is the nth root of x defined when is it defined what must be true x has to be greater than or equal to zero yes Defi <coughs> defined when <coughs> x is greater or equal to 0. OK? So <coughs> uh, to have another little bit of jargon, Whenever you have an expression like this, nth root of x, when, when you have an expression that is written in that way, uh, the x part, so this, is called the argument. So the thing that you're plugging in. So to restate this above, uh, it is to say that odd radicals are defined for any argument, and even radicals are defined only for non-negative arguments. By the way, what's the difference between positive and non-negative? Non-negative means zero. Right. Non-negative means that zero is allowed. Ma mathematicians split hairs, you know, that, that fine. Right. Okay, so for example, I could ask what is the fourth root of, say, um, 81? It's three. Okay, the reason why you could either use your calculator, right, or you could think, well, you know, probably. Probably this has an answer. Look, so let's think. 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. What is that? 16. Okay, so it, it's not 2. Okay, how about maybe it's 3. 3 times 3 is? 9. 9 times another 3 is? 27 times another 3 is? 81. 81. Oh, it's 3. Okay? 3. Okay, how about the fourth root 
of negative 81. What's the correct response? Undefined. This is undefined. Why is this undefined? A negative argument being plugged into an even radical. Right? Even radicals require non-negative arguments. Okay, so this is undefined. Okay, how about how about the cube root of 64? Right, just just try it again. Right. So is it two? So two times two times two. What's that? 8, so it's not 2. How about 3 times 3 times 3, what's that? 27. 27, so it's not that. How about what's 4 times 4 times 4? Ah, 64. Okay, so the, the answer is 4. Okay, so now how about a cube root of negative 64? No, because So, do, do we all agree, first off, in the first place, that this is a radical? Yes. What's its parity? Odd. odd. What kind of argument can go into an odd radical? Any, any kind. Oh. Any kind. So that means that this is fine. This is just fine. So what is the cube root of negative 64? Negative 4. Now why is that? Well, let's take negative 4. Negative 4 times negative 4 is, <coughs> is what? 16. Is positive 16. And then if you multiply by another negative 4, negative, negative 64. the result will be negative 64. Okay. So, <coughs> good. Any question about this? Okay. <coughs> Remark. <coughs> so let uh, x and y be real, <coughs> and in natural, <coughs> and we'll need n to be <laughs> greater than or equal to 2, right? Because it doesn't make sense to talk about a oneth root, first root. Okay, so then in the first case, when n is odd, the nth root of product xy is the nth root of x multiplied by the nth root of y. So this is, al this is always true. Okay, when n is even, <coughs> the nth root of x times y is the nth root of x times the nth root of y. So, so far I've written exactly the same thing. So far. But, but what, I ha what is currently written is incorrect. And we need to write something further so that it will be correct. So what, what further needs to be written so that it will be correct? Uh, in number two, x and y both have to be non-negative. Yes. When x is non-negative and y is non-negative. So this red part is not required for the odd case. Because in the odd case, there's no restriction on x or y. Okay, so examples of this. <coughs> Oops. Uh, how about the cube root of, say, 8 multiplied by uh, 27? Well, according to the rule above, what is this? Cube root of 8 times cube root of 27. Very good. Cube root of 8 multiplied by the cube root of 27. 
and we know both of these things. Yes, the cube root of 8 is 2, two and the cube root of 27 is 3. So the answer is 6. Okay, that works fine. So how about, uh, how about the square root of 9 multiplied by 100? What will this be? Square root of 9 times square root of 100. Good. Square root of 9 times the square root of 100. Do we know both of those? Yes. Good. So any question about that one? Okay, now I'm going to write one. So how about the square root of negative 9 multiplied by negative 100. Is that, so this is a question, is this equal to the square root of negative 9 multiplied by the square root of negative 100? No, it's undefined. Right, you can't do this. You can't do it this way, but you could first simplify that yeah. negative, you, you could cancel the negatives inside and then you could go back to the line before and go that way. But this, this direction is, is an illegal road. So we can't do that. <coughs> Any question about this? So you could just do the square root of positive 900? Yes. Okay. Yes. <coughs> but what I'm, what I'm saying is that, yeah. is that notice that the product of two negative numbers is positive. But that does not mean that you can factor the square root through in this way across a negative product, products of negative things. <coughs> okay, good. <coughs> so the next thing, and this is, a, this is something that I'm going to repeat throughout the semester because it's a subtle point that many students miss. So again, let x be real and let n be natural with n greater or equal to 2. Then in the case when n is odd, <coughs> then the nth root of x to n. So what will this be? Well, it won't be like the square root of x squared, because be yeah. this would be like the cube root of x cubed. So what is it? X. It's x. Mm -hmm. So you're saying something like, well, let's cube x, and then let's compute the cube root of that. So it's altogether sort of a fancy way to say, let's do nothing with that x. OK, so now let's. Well, yeah, OK, I agree. Um, so now, for those of you that have a calculator, please type something like this with your calculator. So type something like 10.2 to exponent 3, and then raise this to exponent 1 third. What should you get when you do such a thing? 10.2. Okay, so if you if you can't get your calculator to agree <laughs> that you take a number, like ten, in, any number, but I, but I selected 10.2, cube it, and then cube root, you should get that same number back. If you can't get your calculator to agree, then you need to practice with your calculator. Okay, 2. In the case that n is even, what is the nth root of x to n? Okay, so I think, I, I'm not sure, but I think I heard it's still x. 
Okay, this is not right. So let's think about this for a minute. Let's take 10. Square it. What do you get? 100. Now compute square root. What do you get? 10. 10. Okay. So in went 10, out came 10. Okay. Now let's take negative 10 and square it. What do you get? 100. And compute square root. 10. So in, well, it, this, the procedure is fine. There's nothing wrong with plugging in negative 10. But when we did negative 10, negative 10 went in and positive 10 came out. The true value? I don't, I don't know what that means. I'm fishing, which one? Absolute value. So when n is even, this is the absolute value of x. Absolute value of x. Okay, notice there's a big difference in the behavior for the parity of the radical. For odd parity radicals, it sort of do, does what you expect. X goes in, X comes out. For, for even parity radicals, it does this other thing. X goes in, absolute X comes out. Okay. <coughs> Any question about this? Okay, for that reason, for that reason, um, we get expressions that end up looking like this. So for example, what is the square root of x squared? It's not x. Absolute value of x. Okay, absolute value of x. How about what is the square root of x to 6? What will that be? There, that, exactly. So notice that, notice that x cubed could be written in iterated exponents as square root of x cubed squared, right? Mm -hmm. So then it's like, if you, if you just cover up that for a minute, so it's like the square root of pinky squared. What will come out? Absolute value of pinky, right? Absolute value of pinky. What are we going to do tonight, brain? <laughs> yeah. Same thing we do every night. So when n is even, x will always be positive. Well, when, when the parity of the radical is even, you have to pay close attention to, to, this, to, this, to the SIGN things. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so absolute value of x. So now, to answer your question, which you asked at the very beginning of the class. The question was, what is the square root of 144 multiplied by p squared q to 6? That, that was the question. Well, how do we go about answering this now? Yes? Very good. Square root of 144 times square root of p squared times square root of q to 6. So in the first place, square root does this. Okay? <clears throat> so what is the square root of 144? 12. Okay, that's presumed knowledge. Now, what is the square root of p squared? Absolute value of p. absolute value of p. And then what is the square root of q to 6? Yes, absolute value of q cubed, which is kind of funny to say, isn't it? And so typically, um, you know, one, one remark, so if, if, the, if the exercise said nothing further than, than what I have written here, then this is the answer. But a typical remark in these exercises, at least at the beginning of a college algebra question, is to say, 
at, at the beginning of a college algebra course is to say something like, assume all of the variables are positive. But what does that mean? Right, that you can just ignore the complication of the absolute values for the time being. Right, so uh, we're, we're taking that strategy in this course. So the, all the questions that I ask that are like this on a written homework have the, have the additional instruction. You can assume all the variables are positive. Okay, but then we're going to get heavily into it when we get to section 2.6, which is when we start talking about absolute value in full force for the first time. Okay? Yeah? Other questions? <coughs> okay. <coughs> so any, any, any questions about this? Okay, so now we need to move to the next topic. What time is it? 29. <coughs> Did we cover everything I wanted to cover? Seems like we're running slightly ahead. Ah, no, there is one other thing. Good. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> so, definition. Let uh, X be real. Let N and M be in the naturals with uh, N greater than or equal to, uh, no, let me see, what do I want? So it has to be positive, yeah, that'll be it, yeah, positive, that'd be fine. I had to think about it. For a second. Okay, so one, no, not one, just, just definition. X to M over N. So up to now, we've had a definition for X to one over N. We've had a definition for X to M. So we know how to do things like X cubed, X to 12. And we know how to do things like x to 1 over 3, x to 1 over 12. So now what we want to be able to do is things like x to 3 over 4, a fractional exponent where the numerator is not 1. Okay, this is by definition x to 1 over n to m. Okay, and remember, what is, what is x to 1 over n? We have a name for that. It's the nth radical, right? It's the nth radical. So then the same parity issues are at play here. That means that when, when the denominator is odd, you can, you can evaluate this anywhere for any x. When the denominator is even, you can only evaluate it, e evaluate it for non-negative x. Okay, so let's practice evaluating these without the aid of a calculator. So for example, how about 8 to 5 thirds without the aid of a calculator? Very good. So it will be, according to the definition, 8, the cube root of that, and then raise this to 5. Well, what is the cube root of 8? It is 2. And then what is 2 to 5? 32. <laughs> Any question about this one? OK. So now that you the cat's out of the bag, I'll give you one. You do it without my aid. So how about 81 to 3 fourths?
So what do you think? 27. 27. Okay, that would be 81 to 1 fourth, and then cube that. Well, the fourth root of 81 is 3. And then 3 cubed is 27. Any question about this example? Okay, how about how about negative 64 raised to the 4 thirds? So can you can you even do this? Yep. Yes, you can. All right, but it, I I'm not sure. I should have checked it beforehand. But I think if you type this into your calculator, your calculator might choke. Yeah. So if you type it into your calculator, your calculator chokes. But that has to do that has to do with the way calculators are made, and it's beyond the scope of the class. But this really is possible to do. So why is it possible? Yes. This corresponds to an odd radical. So this would be negative 64 to exponent 1 third and then raise that to 4. Well, what is the cube root of negative 64? Negative 4 to the 4 is 2. Very good. <coughs> Any question about this? Okay, one more of these. How about 64 over 81, and then let's raise it to the 3 halves power. So on these kind of things, it's good to just follow your nose, right? So then there's, a, there's something new here. Uh, the thing in question, the number in question is now a fraction. That's the new thing. Okay, but, but we're still doing this fractional exponent. So in that way, it's the same as before. So, so to that end, just proceed the same as before. So this would be. Uh, 64 over 81, and then fractional exponent half, and then to 3. Okay, now, so we were able to get at least that far. And now, now there's a question like, okay, well, just what does that half exponent do to a fraction? Right, so... So the, the fractional exponent, or just any exponent, goes to the numerator and the denominator. So this would be 64 to half over 81 to half. And then cube this. So what has occurred in this step <coughs> is that x over y to n is x to n over y to n. And this is this is that same rule that x that product xy to n is x to n times y to n. It's the same rule. Okay, now you should be able to do the numerator and denominator fine. So what is 64 to exponent half? 8 because that's square root. So that'd be 8 and then square root of 81? Nine. 9. And then cubed. And then now what does this cube do? Yes, you can, you can do it as 8 over 9 times 8 over 9 times 8 over 9. That would be fine. But I'm going to do it differently. 
I'm going to distribute the cube in so that I get 8 cubed over 9 cubed. Mm -hmm. 512. 512 over 729. Very good. <laughs> Any question about this? Yes? If you have something like that on the test, would you expect us to simplify the answer if possible? Uh, I will always explicitly say what I want. But by the way, there's, no f there's, there's nothing that can be simplified because the numerator consists entirely of twos and the denominator entirely of threes. Other questions? Okay, <coughs> so now this is slight uh, remark. Now that we've talked about absolute value, at least we just brought it up. So some of you may have noticed that the, that the way that I write a one is like this. It has a hat. <laughs> yeah. Okay. By the way, w for those of you that, have, that know anything about orthography, writing, and things like that, or, or printing, what is the name of this little bit here? A serif. So when you select a, a, a sans serif font in your, in your document processor, that means without serifs. Don't, don't make these little hooky things. But what, is, what does serif mean, by the way? What is the meaning of that word? It's a Sanskrit word. <laughs> it means foot. <laughs> but it's kind of, and that's funny because it's up here, right? So at any rate, I put a serif on my ones. And the reason why, and, and to, because now that looks visually similar to a seven, I write my sevens in this way. Okay, the reason why I do this is because, please tell me, what is the meaning of this statement? Okay, so did, you, did everybody hear that at the same time I heard one minus 11, and I also heard the absolute value of one? <laughs> okay, so th this statement is ambiguous. It's not clear what it means. This one can mean only one thing. Okay, so now what you have to imagine, okay, un understand the process that, that is occurring in your absence. Okay, so I just collected T t today, in, in college algebra, I will collect somewhere between five and 600 pages of homework. And then each one of those stacks will go to some grader, okay, who will then proceed to go through those pages one by one. Okay, we haven't gotten to absolute value yet, but we will. And imagine that you're that grader and that you're on page number 499 and some student writes this for the hundredth time and you, you, you ran out of coffee 90 minutes ago, right? <laughs> you, not happy, right? So, <clears throat> so, it's good to write everything that you're writing legibly because remember, someone is reading it. <laughs> good. <clears throat> Any questions about that? No. Yes? Yeah, I'm confused. Do you don't want us to write it like that? I, I want you to write it as, as legibly and unambiguously as possible. I encourage you to, to adopt some style that's, that's legible and unambiguous. So this, this, is a, this is an example of, an, of a legible and unambiguous style. You could also accomplish it by just making the absolute value bars really high. So something like this, one, min, uh, the absolute value of negative one, that's pretty much unambiguous. Make the absolute value bars really tall. Okay. <coughs> I've seen students confuse themselves on their own page. <laughs> I've seen it. <clears throat> you know, somehow, <laughs> uh, anyhow, I've seen it. Okay, so now the next, the next thing. So section 1.4, polynomials. So the word polynomial 
So poly means many or a multitude, and gnome means name. So this, a literal transliteration of this is many names. So in order to get this done, we need some definitions. So, so let x be real and let n be natural. So the definition of a term Oh, and I, I guess I need A to be real also. Is A multiplied by X to N. So this is a term. And further, in the jargon, is that this is called its coefficient. the term's coefficient. Gesundheit. <coughs> and this one is called the term's degree. <coughs> okay, so by... So, for example, I could give you a term, say, 5x five, uh, five cubed. Okay, what's its coefficient? Five. Five. What is its degree? Three. Okay, how about x squared? What's its coefficient? One. One. What's its degree? Two. Yes? Mm -hmm. Two F's, ha, but, <laughs> well, okay. <laughs> let's, let's stick another one in there. <laughs> okay, and then, uh, now I lost my spot. Okay, so uh, s how about 7X? What's the coefficient? Seven. Seven. And the degree? One. one. Good. Now, as as one one minor addendum to this is that when you have a just by itself, that is to say, just a constant, just a constant, then this is degree zero. So for example, the number 12 is a term of degree zero. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. So two. Uh, this will be called standard form. So a polynomial is a sum of terms. It's said to be written in standard form when the result is collected so let's be clear about what that means so an example of collected is this so 2x cubed uh, plus 10x cubed. So I, I have a question for you. So what do you think about the following sentence? I went to the store and I bought two apples and four oranges. And as a result, I have six oranges. Well, that's possible that you already need to have oranges before you go to the store. Right, but, but, not, but none of that, right? So what's wrong with, with what I said? 
comparing apples to oranges. <laughs> yeah, you're comparing apples to oranges, right? It doesn't work. Okay, now the degree, degree is like is is like its kind. So are these t are these terms of the same kind? Yes. Yes. yes, because this is like apples and this is also like apples, right? Degree three and also degree three. So if you have two apples and then you and then you get ten more apples, right, how many do you have? Twelve. So this, this left-hand side is not collected. The right-hand side is collected. How about, uh, how about 5x cubed plus uh, 6x? Is this collected? It is collected because nothing can be combined. So this is collected. So when it's collected and written in descending order of degree. What does that mean? Right, that means that you write the highest degree term first, the next one next, the next one next, the next one next. So, to be clear, how about uh, x squared plus 4x minus 8 plus 7x cubed and then plus 10x. So is this, is this written in descending order of degree? No. no. Is it collected? No. no. So let's collect and write in descending order of degree. So what is the highest? 7x and do we have any other cubes besides this term? No, no just that one. So 7x cubed. And what's the next highest? X squared. How many terms are squared? Just that one. So how many? Right, x cubed. Uh, x squared, I mean. So what's the next highest? X. X. So how many altogether do we have? 14, 14 of them because we have four of them here and ten more of them there. And then what's next? Minus eight. Minus eight. eight. So, <coughs> Gesundheit. This is, this is in descending order of degree and collected. So this is in standard form. Have a, a nice Monday.